Hello everybody and welcome to the Miniature Showcase. The Miniature Showcase is where we showcase different miniatures from different manufacturers. Now there is a part of painting miniatures that I really really like. Apart from painting miniatures for a game I'm about to play, or painting figures because the sculpt just calls for it, I love painting figures that take inspiration from you know, pop culture. Television, comic books, books, movies. Uh, when I'm painting a figure inspired by pop culture, I feel, I feel like I get a new perspective on the subject. And you know what? Selfishly, I feel like I'm part of it too. This also applies to miniatures that other people paint as well. I love it when somebody walks into the shop and shoves a miniature in my face and says, Now, do you recognize this? <laughs> now, make no mistake, there are a lot of companies even big ones that take inspiration from pop culture. Some companies make some very good inspired miniatures. And I know a lot of people who support these, these small manufacturers. You know, it's a thing, you know. Most of these miniatures are rules agnostic and can be played with any rule set. And some just beg for rules to be made for them. Now, the other day when SL brought in these miniatures into the store for me to have a look, I knew I had to feature them. Not only were they well painted, but they were inspired by that classic movie, The Seven Samurai. Now, The Seven Samurai came out in 1954 and is considered one of the greatest and most influential films in cinema history. The movie takes place in the Sengoku period of Japanese history. Now, in the movie, there is a village that's under threat from roving bandits. The villagers seek out some samurai to help them protect the village. Now, it's a very simple plot, but executed to perfection. I'm sure you've heard this plot before, perhaps A Bug's Life, you know, The Magnificent Seven, but here is where it happened first. If you, by some chance, have not seen this movie, I have left a link in the description for you to go and watch it. It is, after all, on the Internet Archive. Right, so back to the figures. Uh, the miniatures are from North Star military figures, and specifically from their Ronin range. The range was done to support Osprey Games' Ronin rule set. You can use these figures, or you can use other Samurai figures for this game as well. Now, there are games like Taiko from our flagship games, Test of Honor from our Foot Saw Miniatures, or Clash of Katanas from Fighting Hedgehog. You can use these figures for any of these games. On the uh, North Star website, um, these figures are called the Koryu Buntai. I checked online, and the closest thing I got to what this means is Unarmored Ronin. But when I used an online translator, I found out that Unarmored Ronin is Yoroi o Kite Inai Ronin. Yeah, so well. Regardless, Kori Bunta is what they're calling it, and that's what we shall call it. The figures are 28 mm and they are all metal cast. Right, so let's get into the miniatures, shall we? The first figure is that of uh, Kanbei Shimada. In the movie, he is played by Takashi Shimura. He is the leader of the Seven, and in this ensemble cast, pretty much the main hero. This was an easy figure to identify. The sculpt of this figure is very good, and the likeness to Takashi is definitely there. It also helps that he's the only bald character in the set. While watching the movie again, I realized that SL threw the original designs out the window when it came to painting the characters. Still, the amount of detail work he did on all the figures totally makes up for it. Overall, uh, the miniature has a very nice pose. Kanbei seems to be getting his katana ready to face off against an attacker. Uh, there are some subtle designs on the pants or the hakama which you will only notice when you have the figure in your hand. Very muted colors for a very humble samurai leader. The next figure is that of Shichi Roji. In the movie, 
He's played by Daisuke Kato. Now, Shichiroji is Kanbei's old friend and strongest ally. He's also Kanbei's former lieutenant. Ah, uh, this figure was also easy to identify. The sculptor did a great job with the figure, but it also helps that uh, Shichiroji also dresses differently from the rest. Figures like these are a bit harder to make pop because of how simple the sculpt is. Now, here's a quick tip if you find a figure like this. Keep it clean and simple. That, that always works. Shichiroji is in the Haso no Kami katana pose. Haso no Kami means eight directions or all directions. Now, this pose means that he's ready for attack from any direction. Then we have Katsushiro Okamoto. Katsushiro is played by Isao Kimura. The character is uh, the young love element in the movie as he falls in love with the daughter of one of his villagers. Uh, Kanbei takes on Katsuhiro uh, as a student rather reluctantly. Um, despite Katsuhiro well being untested and a son of a wealthy land owning samurai. This figure was easy to identify as well. The more useful hair and the sharper scalp giving this figure a very youthful feel if compared to the rest. Now this is your typical hero, uh, samurai in more conventional modern samurai movies. Young and handsome. The figure is posed as he's about to unsheath his katana. Now I love the movement of the costume. You can see the costume simulates the movement and you can almost imagine how he's unsheathing his katana. This pose is very dramatic and has that cool factor that sets it apart from the rest. The next figure is that of uh, Kikuchiyo. Kikuchiyo is played by Toshiro Mifune. Kikuchiyo lies about being a samurai in the movie, but honestly, in the movie, he's the most entertaining one. A mercurial, humorous, and temperamental role. In every scene that he's in, he nails it. In fact, he practically steals every scene that he's in. Now, this figure has more going on in terms of painting than it shows. The green part of the costume has some very small dotted designs to simulate what I think is a Sakura design. This is such a nice touch as it adds to the figure with some very subtle detail. At just a glance, you'd probably miss it. Kikuchiyo is carrying a, a nodachi or a Japanese great sword. He is in the uh, Kasume no Kame pose. This stance is translated as the uh, mist stance and is great for uh, counter attacking. I read that this pose puts great emphasis on the downstroke of the weapon and is supposedly great against cavalry. The next figure is that of Kyuzo. Kyuzo is played by Seiji Miyaguchi. Now, Kyuzo is a highly skilled swordsman and has an expressionless stone face. Now, I figured that this was Kyuzo simply via deduction. Kyuzo in the movie did not have facial hair and had a fancy kimono as well. Also, he was part of the last four, and this was the closest. This figure also has pattern stippled on the costume for that very subtle effect that makes the figure look no more than it is. Kyuzo is posed in a wakigame stance. The stance is for fast counter-attacking as you are said to be hiding your katana and attacking the opponent from below. The more I look at the stance and the more I read about it, the more I feel this pose is extremely extremely menacing. The uh, figure looks like it's ready to strike um, and the stance seems to move forward in the pose. Very dynamic. Next up is Gorobe Katayama, played by Yoshio Inaba. Gorobe is a skilled archer and is the second in command to Kambei in this movie. 
He's also the one that helps create the plan to fight the bandits. Now, this figure was difficult to place for me. I think I only decided this was Gorobe simply by elimination and how the last figure looks more like Haihachi. You know, he's also dressed in a kataginu, which honestly should have been the first thing I looked for um, <laughs> when trying to identify the character. Because in the movie, he was also wearing a kataginu as well. Anyways, the simple design on the hakama and the small design on the back of the kataginu definitely adds to the figure's look. Here, Gorobe is posed in the Chundan no Kame stance. Now, this stance is translated as the middle level posture. In this stance, the samurai can transition to any other stance. The pose gives a sense of movement and action. The figure pose is already moving forward, I feel, and is ready to strike. The seventh samurai is Hayashi Ayashida, played by Minoru Chiaki. Now, he's perhaps less skilled than the rest. But um, it is his charm and wit that makes him an important part of the group, contributing to the group's morale. The paint scheme on this figure is very simple, but neat. The choice of color is also very neutral. Not overcomplicating the figure is why this figure looks good. Hachi is in the uh, Gedan no Kami stance. Now this stance means low level posture. This stance is popular, as I understand it. Uh, just by reading about it, this stance allows versatile strikes from a low position. The final figure from this set is uh, Shinpei Takagi as the bandit chief. Now, the eye part pretty much gives it away. This figure also has a lot of subtle details that add to the overall paint job, the stippling on the hakama and the top. I want to add here very quickly that if you are new to painting, try not to neglect the details. If it is sculpted on the figure, always consider giving it some attention. Perhaps it needs some paint, perhaps not, but regardless, give the details a quick look before calling the figure done. This is a good tip to remember when finishing a figure. The uh, figure is posed with two weapons, both katana and wakizashi in each hand. He looks like he's up for it and ready for berserker mode. I also like the movement this figure has. All in all, there are eight figures in this set and a very nice set indeed. Whether you get this to play or just get this for your collection, it's a, it's a nice set to get personally. But granted, it's probably more exciting if you've actually seen the movie. So if you haven't, head on to the link and uh, Watch the movie first. You never know. This might be your new thing. Personally, I think SL did a great job on these miniatures. Uh, keeping to his style, a neat and clean style, which, you know, I'm beginning to think is definitely his signature style. And uh, a lot of people like it. It's very bright. It's very, it's very clean. I also want to give credit to the sculptor, Steve Saleh. Now, the fact that I could talk about each figure and the poses that each figure has, how he sculpted them, tells me that he's done a lot of research on these figures. So it's kind of great to know, simply by researching these figures, that the sculptor did a great job. So yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm sure this happens quite regularly and you know, a lot of historical figures do a lot of research, but it's nice to know that even the poses are well-researched. And this one is a very good example of a well-researched set. So great stuff there. Well done, Steve. So that's pretty much the showcase. Um, now the miniature world, let me just say, is filled with independent companies making some really nice miniatures. And I love featuring them. I do this because I think a lot of these miniature companies deserve some notice and deserve some attention. And if videos like this can help bring them out from the darkness, into the a more mainstream light, then sure, I'll make more of them. Actually, regardless, I'll definitely make more videos like this. Now, help support the channel with a like, subscribe, or better yet, give us a comment. Did you enjoy Seven Samurai? Have you seen it? 
Have you painted these figures? Were they uh, nice figures to paint? Or perhaps you're into Kendo and you think I've got something, some of the poses wrong? Let me know in the comments. Until then, don't forget to enjoy painting those figures.